guys in this video I'm going to show you 11 different activities that you can do in the Big Bend National Park of course there are a lot more than 11 things that you can do here I'm simply summarizing some major activities like these ones Big Bend lies in the southernmost tip of Texas and the nearest big cities like Houston and Dallas lie at 7 to 8 hours driving distance in our first trip, we reached here after 4 p.m. and all the campsites were taken. We had to drive one hour to an outside town where we camped in a private campground. But that was a great experience as well. As a matter of fact, anything you do here is worth the time. It's a long drive from the checkpoint to the Panther Junction Visitor Center. This is where you can get permit for all the primitive campsites on a first come first serve basis. Primitive camping is number one in my list. Campsites are scattered all over the park that covers 1,252 square miles of area. So get ready to drive through rough roads. Four wheel drive is must to get to these campgrounds. Some campsites are close to the main road while some are few miles away. The primitive sites do not have barbecue pits. During high wind and dry weather, any sorts of fire is banned here, not even cold. So please remember to get uh, your butane tanks. Basin is about 30 minute drive from the Panther Junction Visitor Center. The drive gave us chills as the velvety clouds rolled through the hills. This is the paradise in the middle of the desert. Be not surprised if you start humming sounds while driving here. winding roads go through the hills and emerges into a gorgeous valley. On the southern side lies the Texas's second highest mountain called the Emory Peak. The valley has a scenic window-like opening on one end. The campsite sits in a small hillside with a magical view. As the sun goes down, stars come up. A full moon night can ruin the stargazing. Therefore, try to pick a new moon night if you really want to view the Milky Way band. And there rises an exquisite morning, one we yearn to live. Among many trails in Big Bend, I would rate the Emory Peak Trail as the toughest one. This trail is more than 10 miles back and forth, rising up to 7,825 feet and second only to the Guadalupe. Depending on the pace, it may take anywhere from 6 to 10 hours. Prepare well before starting the hike. Get basic hiking stuff like Poles, bag with hydration pouch as there is no water source anywhere in the trail. Get a snack bars, lunch, and a headlamp in case it gets darker while returning. If you like hot milk, like me, noodle is the best way to go. However, it requires hot water. The easy solution is to get butane burner and a steel can. With these, you can also make coffee anywhere in the trail if needed. Don't push too hard on yourself. Take frequent breaks. If you have hard time breathing, 
I would suggest to turn back. There is no shame in it. The top part of the peak is quite a challenge. It's a rock climbing without ropes. At first look, I thought I couldn't do it, but managed it somehow. As David Attenborough says, at last. I was surprised that the park ranger have allowed to climb this section to anyone. The whole mountain looks unstable. But the view from the top is worth the risk. And the feeling of getting to the top is priceless. The southern side hills get smaller and ends in the Dry Grand River, a U.S.-Mexico border. In the northern side, Senor Guadalupe rises to a highest point in Texas, and now a long downhill hike. Lost Mine Trail is fairly an easy trail with round trip distance of 5 miles. If you can't and don't have time to hike the Emory, I highly recommend this trail. It's short and full of breathtaking views. Driving to Rai Grand Village is a beautiful sight. On its way, there are some bird sighting spots as well. The village and the visiting center are situated right next to the Rio Grande River. The village has campsites, RVs, RV sites and much more. Back in the day, this was literally a village here with more than 500 people. There was a cotton plantation here, but with the reduced flow of water in the Rio Grande, everybody left. Like I said, you can hike back. Right right to it and get in there so for a while and then there's a restroom uh, okay. just past here there's a building and old, the old motel rooms and stuff and there's a restroom there if you want to change in your swimsuits the hottest springs trail is the best one it's short and easy however the weather can be a big factor this is a desert after all it's November and it's very hot today. The plants you see around here favors the desert weather. These thorny bushes have evolved to store and save the rare rainwater that falls here by forming the well-like structures. No rodents can penetrate these walls to steal any collected water. Here is the survival of the fittest. Okia's Cannon Trail is 1.2 miles long and will take you to the pass. It will also take you closest to Mexico. You can buy Mexican goodies from no one, but leave the money in a canister. You are watching a millions of years of evolution here in the canyons carved by the ever-flowing Rye Grand. There is a Mexican country singer on the other side of the river. If you listen to him, you will need to tip him in his tip jar. Hmm, I wonder how he collects his tips. The Dinosaur Fossil Museum sits hidden from the nearest road. It was carefully designed in order to not add any artificial concrete and still view in the nature. The rusty structure perfectly blends with the landscape. In 
inside there are thousands of dinosaurs and primitive animals bone collections. If you are into paleontology, you can spend hours reading about these creatures in the walls. Terlungua is a small country town situated west of the park. It has grocery stores, restaurants and private campgrounds if one can get inside the park. There aren't well-defined trails, but we managed to hike through the dried up creeks and up a rusted mountain. Barbecue is always a great way to camp and at night you can stargaze and enjoy the Milky Way galaxy. On the way to St. Helena Canyon, you can stop by Castellon, a small town or a place with a visitor center and a gift shop. Looking at these heavy duty equipment, it seems like they had a big farmland in the past. On the far end is the Great Wall of Mexico and that's where lies St. Helena Canyon. And what's better than beer in the desert? St. Helena Canyon Trail is about 1.5 miles one way. Hiking is fairly easy and on a good weather day it's very crowded. These canyons remind of Grand Canyon. They are gigantic yet beautiful. The nature always finds its way. In this case the river has found This is the Great Wall of Mexico. It's so big that it's hard to comprehend by watching a photo or a video. The Rio Grande River provides great opportunity for kayaking. It is clearly one of the favorite activities around here. Marfa is a desert town northwest of the park and at quite a distance. Yet we decided to drive here for an iconic Prada store. It's not what it sounds like. It's a scripture art by Ungreen and Dragset with fake items on the display in the middle of the desert. No further comments. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel walk the trails. Happy hiking!